just came across this on a social media feed and thought it would really help us to contextualise and understand the grooming gang phenomenon that Britain was blighted with over the last two or three decades or so from men, and I use that word men in the loosest fashion, from the Asian subcontinent. Thankfully, the police appear to be on top of this now and they're going after historic cases and bringing them to British justice, which sadly is all too lenient and lets the perpetrators out to roam the same towns and cities as their victims. Upon their release from the holiday camps where they get free, free gym access, free sky sports and pool tables to keep them entertained, these holiday camps are alternatively known as prisons. There's a story relayed to us where a person recalls being of high school age and coming downstairs at night and seeing his father who had brought two females off the streets into his house to drink with him. From the way he said it, he gave the indication that there was more than drinking on his father's mind. This is an indigenous Brit living up north, not some Asian lad. Whether the females were underage, we don't know. Whatever the case may be, the fact remains the victims of grooming gangs will almost definitely have been victims of individual groomers picking them off the streets to bring them home for drinks, coke and you know what. The victims of Asian grooming gangs would have been victims of all sorts of wrong guns as street kids from various communities in those towns. But it seems like the Asians organised this on an industrial level as a business enriching themselves as gangsters whilst the individual pervs seem to have gone under the radar. The fact remains the police and the council sent subliminal messages out that they didn't care. They didn't care about these kids. That was the message that they were sending out whether they knew it or not. The message they sent out was do as you please with impunity. They sent this message out through their inertia, their lack of care and action that all led to this spiralling out of control. The MPs, the councillors and the respective police heads of each town or city affected must be held to account. Their pensions need to be stopped and they need to be investigated for criminal negligence. We highly suspect the police force were involved in picking these street kids up and using them as well on an individual basis, hence why the police were so lax in this regard. It's all got to be investigated. Of course, we're not saying the police officers would have been picking them up whilst in patrol cars and uniforms. They would have been doing this whilst off duty. There's a stench of corruption around all this and we do not trust the police narrative. Mr Griffin has assessed the situation quite correctly. It's the elites and those in authority that we need to shine a light on. The answer to this is not to hate these people or their community because yes, perhaps their community should speak out, but so should our community leaders. And what have our politicians, uh, our media people, our police chiefs done about it? Absolutely nothing. So the only way to deal with this issue is not to go out uh, attacking Muslims or something like that. It's to get involved in politics and to deal with the people who are really to blame, which is our elite, and then force them to do something. Another point to bear in mind is this cop out, when they say the police and the authorities did not act because they did not, they did not want to upset the Asian communities or did not want to affect diversity. That's a cop out. It's clearly a lie to cover up for their own negligence, failures and or corruption. We're anti-establishment as well as realists. The fact that the Zayo Sivnats never protested against the authorities says it all for us. The Zayo Sivnats are always missing the bigger picture that's due to their designs of propaganda and grift. Moving on to Asia, looks like the Asian subcontinent has the same problem. Turns out there's an Asian, Indian to be precise, actress, Malika Sharawat, saying that the land of Gandhi has become the land of gang groomers. So it appears gang crimes of this nature are a problem or blight in that region as well. That's not surprising, is it? This actress said, I think what's happening with women and children of this country is absolutely shameful. From the land of Gander, we have become a land of gang groomers. And I think it's the media in the country that is a really strong force today. So all hopes are pinned on the media. If it's not in the media, then nobody would know about these cases. I think because of the pressure from the media, these new laws 
have been enforced so we are really thankful to the media for this she added what's interesting here is that folks are relying on their media to report on the problem in india but what of the british media now the british media did report on it but nobody trusts the mainstream media nowadays it's lost its credibility and cachet within the british psyche this is no longer the 1950s it's a different age people are skeptical when the media the mainstream media speak the mainstream media has been failing the public again as it's not investigating the roles of the police and the, and the establishment in criminal negligence and or corruption that's exactly what the public would want but they're failing to serve the public's interest again why is this why are they not investigating the roles of the police and the establishment the police and the councils which overlooked or failed the victims across the uk need to be held accountable the problem is there's no appetite amongst the grifters and paypal patriots to organize demos against councils and uh, the, uh, as well as the police as it doesn't bring in the numbers the money and it does not serve the zio sivna agenda one thing that is for certain the police and the councils are complicit through their failures and or corruption but sadly just like the epstein case the darker hands behind it all and all those involved in the mass grooming gang for the elite are just not brought to book and the zio sivnats remain silent on the nation behind epstein we all knew that was the case but for it to actually break in uh, large british tabloids it was in the sun that was huge news now tommy robinson has been pictured in a mossad shirt now knowing that mossad were behind or involved in the grooming and trafficking of dozens if not hundreds of girls of european descent by epstein and maxwell don't you think he should at least have the honesty the integrity to say i've stood against these muslim grooming gangs but i'm going to stand against other groomers of other ethnicities because i care about the victims but he doesn't and i'll tell you this now if jeffrey epstein had been a muslim tommy would be standing outside one of prince andrew's residences he'd have a placard in each hand he'd be shouting through a, he'd be shouting his head off and ezra levant would be somewhere in the background coordinating the fundraising